In short, yes, this is going to be a video in support of Palestine. And no, if you do decide to unsubscribe right now, I will not give a flying fuck. <laughs> I started this channel because my life had been saved and changed forever by this medicine because I wanted to tell others what it had done for me to see as many others as have access and maybe have their lives changed too. Before this flower I had little ability to have any empathy or compassion for others. I mean how could I? I had zero compassion for myself. I felt completely numb and hopeless before but now because of this flower I have a little spark of hope that tells me even if I only plant one seed in my life and I see no benefit that that seed might blossom into a beautiful bush of flowers for others to enjoy in my stead and that makes life worth living for me now. But I, like many other advocates and the patients I've spoken to in this space, are burnt out from fighting for our own rights in a system that has just felt rigged against us from the start. Somewhere down the line in advocating this sector, I started to see through a lot of the lies that we were told about this industry. I saw how little care many had for patients that had made this business so profitable. The contempt they had for us became ever clearer. I mean, some just had little care for what we had to say, unless it was just unconditional support. I started to feel used, misled, further exploited. I realized that maybe at times my videos weren't just helping patients, but those who were also exploiting the patients. Regardless of never actually taking a penny from this industry, I felt kind of complicit if I didn't speak up louder about the injustice and exploitation of patients in this sector. I'd just be doing them an injustice, the patients, and I would be an, an apologist or somehow complicit to this industry's actions. The obvious question is why the hell does a 30-something white guy living in the UK who's never experienced any real sort of prejudice and makes stupid videos on the internet with Pokemon plushies on his desk suddenly talking about Palestine and Israel. And you'd be absolutely right to say that I had no connection or really right to speak on this conflict. But regardless, I wanted to, or I felt compelled to at least, sleep deprivation. I want to share why I can perhaps empathize with it. When I was growing up, I spent a lot of time visiting and staying with my family in Belfast. Now, just to be clear, I'm not going to try and equate the troubles and my experience with it with what's happening in Palestine today. For many obvious reasons, probably the first one that comes to mind is there just wasn't military planes dropping bombs. At a very young age, I witnessed the ass end of a simmering sectarian conflict. As a kid, I didn't understand why I had to be careful with what I said or or where we went. I thought the army was there to protect us. I wondered why they looked at us as if they hated us. I didn't understand why the other team supporters threw glass and bricks at me, and why the adults around me were throwing them back at them only to just put me in more danger. I didn't understand why there were huge walls everywhere, murals of the dead and paintings of men with guns and masks on, on the side of my grandma's street, fires and loud noises every other night. Why did my dad get interned when he was my age? Why did the army stop me and my grandma from walking home holding a rifle inches from my terrified face with a look of exacerbated contempt on theirs? As a child, I didn't know why some people were blowing up buses, pubs, hotels, and killing one another in the street. I didn't know what led up to this. I didn't participate in this. I didn't know why they hated me or my family or what we did to deserve their hatred in the first place. As an adult, I can understand now and rationalize why some will have felt compelled to violence in the face of grave injustice. Thankfully, like myself, most parties seem to be exhausted by that violence and can return to civil discussion and the interest of a more peaceful resistance. But personally, my views have never changed, that regardless of reason, violence is just never justified, especially when innocent parties are caught in that crossfire. Others are just gonna say it's not that black and white, or that I'm just being naive. Fine. That's fine. But we have the immense privilege and comfort of arguing those nuances. One of which is that understandably, when bombs are raining down from above your head, nuances mean jack sh It's not the same! Hey.
I don't know how I can help, and I imagine I'm not the only one feeling helpless right now, but even if it's a letter to my MP, a protest, or a donation, or just a conversation, I don't want to feel like that by staying quiet, I'm an apologist, or somehow complicit to the injustice that I see in the world. Too often in my life, I feared what others might say, because I felt too stupid, or I lacked the understanding, and I was anxious to avoid escalation or further conflict. But I see now, by not speaking truth to what I see, I'm only lying to myself and protecting myself from that conflict. The British government is entirely inconsistent on war crimes. We see atrocities happen in Ukraine, Ethiopia, Syria, Myanmar, Congo, Sudan, and the list just goes on. I'm proud when we call it what it is. The big G word that YouTube would likely sh brick when they hear me using. We just about began to recognize historical complicity, financed participation or organization or colonization, apartheid, slavery, and all-round international superbullying. Some of us were beginning to recognize that Britain could perhaps attempt to right some of these wrongs and, and still have a moral high ground to stand on to condemn others when they make the same similar violent decisions I would hope most of us collectively regret making in the past. The reason that I made made this video is that our government has lost absolutely every shred of credibility in that respect. And honestly, as selfish as it might be, I can't go to sleep or make another video until I've said something about this. We can't keep seeing the same harrowing images on the news every day, keep crying and worrying what others might say or do if I say anything. What I do actually worry about is that I kept quiet and said nothing while this was all happening. Too busy trying to understand the nuances when the writing was on the wall. Again, I will not try and conflate the troubles with anything that's happening in completely different circumstances and contexts. From this personal experience, I can empathize and realize that similar to the conflict that I do feel connected to, it started long before I was born. It started long before the most recent violent action or attack. I now frustratingly understand that peace from a long-standing violence doesn't happen in one day, nor does it happen by ignoring the past or present injustices starts by acknowledging our part, the damage done by our side, and seeking in good faith to repair that damage. The walls don't come down in one day. We have to start being honest with one another. And if I'm being honest, even with peace, even with the current two-state solution, Palestinians growing up on the West Bank may never swim on the beaches of Gaza. Families will not be reunited. People will not be returned to their homes and land. Israel will continue to see violent resistance, which we will all still, of course, condemn. But unjustly, people who, despite given many reasons to commit violence and still refuse to do so, will still continue to be demonized and killed for the violent actions of others around them. The often skewed truth is that this once was a land with a great number of diverse people. There has to be a liberation, not just a recognition. A real end to the ever-growing, obvious occupation. Peace isn't won through more violence, no matter how you spin it. The Palestinian children did not vote for Hamas over 20 years ago. Palestinian or Israeli children did not ask to be blamed for the crimes of their parents. It's blatantly obvious that kids can't see the nuances or know their own true history in the midst of impending danger, when they're living in the midst of adults' hatred of one another. But we can. We can understand what led us here. If you can understand that I'm not IRA, then you can understand that Palestine is not Hamas. You should be able to understand that no one should suffer discrimination or contempt for life. Everyone, regardless of religion, ethnicity, or just your postcode, everyone is entitled to the same right of life, freedom, and justice through non-violent means. Maybe idealistic, but at its core I believe is the truth. Torture is wrong. Apartheid and occupation is wrong. Indiscriminate bombing and genocide is wrong. Forced dispossession and starvation is wrong. Something that I never thought in my life would fill me with panic to say. A gun targeted at a child's head doesn't have an argument no matter who is holding the gun. Our government is wrong to defend it and makes little effort to respond, ensure we're not complicit, provide aid, and cry out injustice to those who are victim of it. And honestly, times, they're just a messy bunch of eaten cum. If there was no way, I would go 
I feel powerless to do anything meaningful. Others will likely agree with that, and some will think I look stupid making a YouTube video about it and will likely leave. That's okay. This channel wasn't for them. This channel was always a place for me to express myself. Express myself for a cause that I'm committed to, and simply won't do that anymore if that expression isn't with conviction. I only have my voice, nothing more. Remember, we can plant a seed, and even if it will never grow in our lifetime, the soil is covered in blood or stomped on, it is enough to keep planting that seed, because someday, someone will benefit from that beautiful flower. That flower is a hope that peace with justice can exist. But listen, like I said, you can't have that compassion for others unless you first have that compassion for yourself. That's why I always remind you to love yourself, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, and one last thing, feel free to leave your comments and thoughts down below. Uh, just don't be a c- yeah.